Hello Year 5, my name is Mrs Williamson and I'm one of the art teachers at Birch Hall High School. I've got a lovely little task for you to try if you would like to accept the challenge, which is looking at lovely insects and butterflies and beetles and moths and anything else unusual that you find in your garden. I've noticed while I've been in lockdown that I've noticed a lot more different types of insects on my plants and flowers that I wouldn't normally see. So I thought it'd be really nice to use these as our inspiration today. So as you can see on the sheet in front of you, I've got images that I've collected off the internet that I found interesting. So I've got beetles, I've got butterflies and I've got moths. Now, the first task is to draw out lightly in pencil an insect that you find exciting or interesting to draw. Now, if you look on the internet and you find pictures like I have here, sometimes they're quite difficult to draw out. So what I've done as an example is I have also printed from the internet some simplified drawings of insects so that you can just see the shapes and patterns and lines on the body, okay? This one here is very, very simple and this one here is a lot more complicated. So it's entirely up to you how simple or how complicated you want your line drawing to be. I was interested in this wasp type insect and a lovely butterfly here. So what I have done in my sketchbook is I have drawn out both a wasp and a butterfly, which you can't really see very well because that's in pencil at the moment. So your first task would be on a piece of paper is to draw out the insect that inspires you. So I chose two for this demonstration and there you can see the butterfly and the wasp. So your first task Sorry, it be your second task because you've already drawn your first task out in line. Your second task would be to find a permanent marker. Um, you don't have to buy a Sharpie. You can get any permanent markers in the supermarket. And what you're going to do is you're going to outline your light drawing in a permanent black marker. So looking at this insect here, it's got these beautiful pinky purples and hints of reds hidden within it. <clears throat> this one has got lovely greens with hints of yellow. So what I have done is I have looked at a colour wheel <clears throat> and I've thought about what colours I would like to use. Now for this task, what I'm going to be using are just your basic felt tip pens, which you can buy from any supermarket, Tesco's, B&M, anywhere. <clears throat> okay. So I've looked at my colour wheel and I've chosen colours that are next to each other on the colour wheel. So here I've got a yellowy green and then after that colour would be this greeny blue or a turquoisey kind of colour. And then I would have my blue and then I've got my purple and then I've got this kind of pinky colour which fits round here in the reds, in the red tones. Any of the colours that I've chosen all complement each other as you go round. I haven't chosen any colours that go opposite each other. So I haven't chosen any colours which are, for example, orange and blue, because if I mixed orange and blue together with my felt tip pens, I would get a really horrible brownie, dirty colour. Same if I went for purple and yellow, and the same if I went for um, red and green. So I've chosen them so they are next to each other on the colour wheel as we go round. Right, so I started on my 
fog here by using the lime colour, the yellowy kind of lime colour, and I have chosen this pinky colour as part of it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how you use felt tip pens, a water pot and a paintbrush, and bleed out so you have shades of a colour. So I take my felt tip pen, I work quite quickly in that area. I take a paintbrush, dip it in water, take a little bit of the water off because you don't want it to be too wet. Paint over the top of your felt tip pen and then drag the light colour down the leg of the insect. So you can see there, I've got the colour's quite intense and it gradually fades out. So I've got a nice tint of that colour. You can see the felt tip pen hasn't bled because it's a permanent marker. So the black outline will always stay where it should be. And that's why you need to use a permanent marker for that outline task. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at possibly making these stripes quite interesting. So I'm going to go for my stripes, I think with these shades of color. I'm gonna start with the blue first. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put the blue I'm going to try put one on either side like this and then use the water the water take the excess water off again i think what i might do is bleed them into the middle so we've got a light tone there in the middle and then i'm going to change to this color do the same again. I'm wanting this insect, insect to look really bright and vibrant. And what is that it's to do? It just gives you the effect that you can paint your insect.
And there you have a lovely, bright, bold insect using felt tip pens, a permanent marker, a paintbrush and a water pot. That's my fly, buzzing fly insect. And here's another one that I was doing yesterday, which is a butterfly. And I've used on this one, warm colours, yellow, orange and yellow, red, orange, yellow in the middle. And then my cool colours of blues and greens around the outside, looking at my colour wheel. I hope you have lots of fun and I can't wait to see some of your images sent to me. Take care, have fun, bye. Mm -hmm.